That's one of the lateral, lateral incisors that we prep for this. And hopefully you'll notice some things here. This is kind of the picture that I want you to have in your mind. It's a, a dramatic version kind of of an ideal impression because this patient did have a deep sulcus and so it makes it easier to point out some of what's going on here. We'd like to see a half a millimeter to a millimeter of an impression material, uh, an impression of the root structure that not only shows the technician exactly where that margin is, that point in space, but as you get the impression of that root structure, now all of a sudden the technician can really blend the emergence profile of that crown. And on an anterior crown like this, that is really important. So we've seen some not so ideal impressions. Let's talk about the eight characteristics or requirements for an ideal impression. How do you even articulate, you know, I followed one of those tiny impressions down to the plaster department because I wanted to see how they pour it up. Do they have a tiny green bowl and a tiny spatula where they put a tiny bit of Yellowstone in there and, and mix it up on a tiny vibrator and then pour it in and have a tiny articulator that it's gonna go on? I mean, how do you even work with that as a crown and bridge impression? It's just, it's, it's just compromised from left to right, from start to finish. And the way I was taught to take impressions in dental school was to place one retraction cord in the sulcus, then we'd wait our five to eight minutes, and then we'd pull that retraction cord out. And anytime the last retraction cord comes out of a sulcus, and in a one cord technique, there's only one, so that is the last one when you pull it out, there will be blood, they will be bleeding. I don't care how healthy your patient's sulcus is or when their last cleaning was, when you pull that last cord out of the sulcus, there will be blood. And so the game was always tell my assistant, don't pull it yet. You know, so I'm getting behind her with the impression syringe ready and go ahead, pull it out. And I'm like racing behind her, trying to beat the blood into the sulcus. As though if I got there first, the blood would see the polyvinyl silox and I go, whoa, 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 boys, he beat us this time. Back, let's go back into the capillaries. We lost this battle, we'll get him next time. The blood didn't care. The blood continues to kind of come out and compete for space in that sulcus with the impression material. And the blood always seems to win. You end up with thin little friable pieces of impression material uh, in the sulcus. And so it's incompatible with blood um, in the sulcus. That's 75% of the cases that come into Glidewell are single unit crowns. And then another 11% are two single units often next to each other. So that's 86% of the cases coming in here roughly are one and two unit crown and bridge cases. And that's about the same amount, that 86%, 85, 86% of the cases coming in that we see in double arch trays here in the laboratory. So it's a, it's a big number and it, it represents a lot of the cases that comes in. And since we, most of us tend to do dentistry or at least crown and bridge one or two units at a time, uh, really making sure that we know our double arch um, technique and that our lab does as well goes a long way to getting success with this. So let's talk about predictable impressions and what benefits we can get from the two cord technique. Um, this happens to be the cord that I've used uh, most of my career, the Ultra Pack cord from Ultra Dent. It's not until we put our double zero in and it's sitting there, we get the vertical retraction and now we put a top cord in, the vertical retraction's already gone where we now can get this lateral retraction of the tissue because it moves in two dimensions. So we have to move it down before we can move it out. The only other way to do it is if we had like maybe a size 12 or some huge retraction cord that would do both things at once. You'd push it in and assuming it didn't tear the tissue away from the underlying periosteum, you could get vertical and, and horizontal or lateral retraction of the tissue at the same time. That really doesn't happen very much though, as you know. And so as we look now at this picture that you see on the screen, you can see I've teased the, double, the number two cord up out of the sulcus and you can see the black double zero cord at the base of the sulcus still. There's no skill here. I mentioned it earlier, there's no skill when it comes to great impressions. What's the skill in putting a double zero cord? None, it's simple. Where's the skill in a number two cord? It's slightly harder than a double zero, but is it hard? It's not hard. Does it take time? It does take time. And that's why for me, it's not a skill thing. It's more of a heart thing, you know, caring enough to get great impressions for your your technician where you're gonna spend the time to put a second cord in. For some reason, of all these things we do in dentistry, dentists really find cord packing to be annoying and will do almost anything they can to avoid doing it. Meanwhile, it is clearly the most effective and the gold standard way for getting great retracted impressions like this that lead to amazing models to have crowns be made on. And look at all that space we have here. You can see a wide space between the sulcus and the tooth structure itself. Sometimes you might even find a patient's car keys or a credit card they lost in there. That's, we're looking deeply into the sulcus 
And here it is just schematically in a drawing. So the drawing on the left, you can see the green double zero cord in place during the impression. You can see the purple impression material all along the tooth and then down into that sulcus. And then when you remove that impression, the double zero cord stays in place in the sulcus like you see on the image on the right. And then the image on the left, now the in par inside part of the impression material has been turned kind of a gold color. And here's just another example, again, of a two cord uh, impression. You can just see it very easily by the excess material beyond uh, where the gingival preparation for the restorative margin has been done. And then the thick top to that wall where it was in contact with the double zero cord. Because once you take a stone model out of a polyvinyl impression, you might think you can put it back in again, but it'll never seat all the way. So you blow the accuracy of that bite if you do it that way. You need to make sure they're pouring one side, mounting it, pouring the other side, mounting it on the articulator, however they wanna do that. And then and only then, separate those two arches from the double arch tray. So you gotta have both arches poured and have it articulated and everything set before you separate those two models from the impression. Then you have the most accurate bite in dentistry. And what we're trying to do is avoid remakes. And so I, I usually, you know, we, we talk about remakes uh, as a percentage in this section, but we also want to talk about the true cost of a remake, for example. So the lab fee may or may not be covered. Um, here at Glidewell, you probably already know there's a no fault remake policy. So whether the crown breaks when you try it in or the patient doesn't like how it looks or you, doesn't li you don't like how it looks, the lab fee will be covered and Glide will send you a new restoration um, free of charge. Because if you schedule a patient um, to redo a crown that didn't fit next Tuesday at, at 10 a.m., um, you're doing that for free. You're redoing and remaking that crown for free at 10 a.m. next Tuesday, and you'll never have that hour back to produce that $1,200. Um, so you might say, well, it's not that. Well, it is. You're, you're really losing the ability to be able to um, have that $1,200. So now it's $1,200 plus the $300 in overhead, which makes it difficult. About. So again, we want to lower these remakes as much as possible. And it really comes down to the impression whether or not we're going to have these remakes. We can work with preps that aren't perfect. It's almost impossible to work with impressions that aren't perfect. So let's talk about some of the most common impression errors that we see in the laboratory as we walk through and look at cases. I've made all these mistakes on multiple, multiple occasions uh, over time and hopefully aren't making these anymore. Uh, because you don't have to kind of make these. The first one is in regards to margins. Critical bubbles. We see a lot of bubbles like this. It really is ironic. You know, you'll look at full arch impressions. It might be a full arch impression for like a single unit crown. And I swear to you, nine times out of 10, the only bubble you'll see on that entire impression is on the prep tooth. This seems cruel and unusual. It certainly wants to push you towards doing digital impressions. Marginal tears. Ooh, that one on the right. I used, even when I started here at Glidewell, I used to have that happen a lot. And it was happening when I was still doing a one chord technique before the two chord technique. So I was able to sneak some impression material sub gingival, but then it was tearing when I went to take the impression material out. This also might happen with the two chord technique if you're using a material that doesn't have a high, an impression material that doesn't have a high tear strength. And so it's possible to do the two chord technique, pull the top chord, have your laterally retracted sulcus, squirt the impression material in, seat the tray, let it set for five minutes. Now when you go to remove that impression, you're pulling this direction, right? You're pulling out of the mouth. And down here in the sulcus, we have this double zero cord sitting here, and it's stuck in place, more or less, and it's kind of pulling on the impression material as you try to pull it out of the mouth. Are you enjoying this instructional video? I hope so. If you'd like to receive additional clinical instruction, with AGD and ADA approved CE credits, all at no charge, be sure to visit glidewelldental.com forward slash education, where in addition to over 60 on-demand clinical courses, you can also access our weekly webinars along with other valuable content.